everyone, this is Holly. In this video, I'll be making another pipe divider swirl soap. You'll find the recipe, links, and information all listed below this video. When making soap, be sure to cover any exposed skin and wear eye protection during the entire process, even when cleaning up the bowls and equipment. The pipe divider swirl technique was created by Tanya of Soapish and taught to us by Amy Warden in the Soap Challenge Club. I've listed links below to both Tanya's Amazing Soaps and the Soap Challenge Club where you'll find information on current challenges and how to purchase all of the past tutorials. For this technique, I first secure the pipes to the bottom of a slab mold by dipping them into melted cocoa butter and then placing them in the mold. If you're using pipe couplings like these, one end will usually have raised writing. Be sure to use the smooth end of each pipe so they sit flat against the mold and the seal created by the cocoa butter prevents any soap from leaking. In order to have enough soap for both inside and outside the pipes so I don't run out before reaching my desired height, I calculated the percentage of soap I'll need based on the volumes. I use these percentages later to divide my soap batter. If you'd like to see the math and tips for my volume calculations, I've listed those below this video along with all the dimensions and weights. You can also watch my previous pipe divider swirl video where I give another example. I'll link it here in the top right corner and below in the description box. Once I have the pipe set, I place the mold in the refrigerator so the cocoa butter will harden quicker and be ready when it's time to pour the soap. For the soap outside the pipe, I used orange eyelight clay and pink kaolin clay. I measured about two teaspoons of each clay and added just enough distilled water to make them fluid so they'll be easy to blend in later. For the soap inside the pipes, I prepared indigo root powder and activated charcoal by mixing each with sunflower oil using the measurements you see on the screen. For this technique, I try to stop blending when I reach emulsion because I still have a lot of stirring to do when the colorants are added and I don't want the soap to get too thick. Here I'm looking at the blender shaft for signs of oil separation. If emulsion hasn't been reached, you'll see small beads of oil start to form. This soap looks really smooth with no signs of separation, so I was ready to divide it up and create the colors. I actually could have stopped blending a bit sooner as you'll see during the pour that my batter is much thicker than I wanted. After weighing my batter and subtracting the bowl weight, I used the percentages I calculated earlier to divide the soap. 36% for inside the pipes and the remaining 64% for outside. Again, if you'd like to see my specific calculations, just check out the description box below this video. I start with the soap that will go outside the pipes. I first divide the soap evenly into two separate containers and then add a little paprika infused sunflower oil to each, about one quarter teaspoon per cup of soap. I wanted to make sure these colors were more orange than pink, so I thought the paprika oil might help. I'm not sure it really mattered though, so this is completely optional. I then added the orange and pink clays to create two different shades of orange soap. For the light orange soap, I only use the I like clay. And for the dark orange soap, I used a combination of eye light and pink kale and clay. For the soap going inside the pipes, I first divided it into three separate containers. I just guessed at these amounts, keeping in mind that I wanted the majority of the soap to be blue and white and only a small amount to be black. To create the blue soap, I use the indigo root oil at a rate of one quarter teaspoon per cup of soap. And finally, to create the black soap, I use the activated charcoal oil at a rate of one teaspoon per cup of soap. 
Here I'm transferring the orange soaps into containers with longer spouts that make it easier to pour into narrow spaces. Before I show the pour, I wanted to mention that I normally use a turntable here because it makes rotating the mold a bit easier. However, I had failed to sit it out and my soap was getting thick fast, so I just went ahead without it. To remove the pipes, you simply give them a little twist to break the cocoa butter seal, then lift them straight up and out. As you can see here, I ended up with a fairly uneven top due to the soap being so thick when I poured it. This technique is actually pretty forgiving when it comes to a thicker trace. However, in order to really see the design in the finish bar, I felt I needed to cut away or plane the tops. I never waste any soap though, so these extra scraps were used as embeds in a new soap. <music> 